Thank you, thank you. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here. First, thank you, uh, Manolis, for uh, inviting me. Happy birthday. I don't know if the picture is still up there. I actually have only um, three short stories. I think I have four minutes or so. One short, one medium short, and one sort of long short. The first story I'll tell you is that whenever you're invited to give a talk, you should probably always send a picture in advance because the one that was chosen for me looks like I just came out of a methadone clinic. Um, I did not take that picture. I did not send that picture. I feel a little bit like I just came out of a methadone clinic, but that's because I've had too much wine. I was looking okay. for a picture where he would not just be the smartest person in the room, he would also be the most handsome. Oh, thank you, thank you. I was trying. <clears throat> I, um, I mean, you, if it helps, you can imagine me in the shower. At least that's what I tell my wife. That's actually, that probably won't help. Never mind, never mind. But the, okay, the second short story, um, you know, is really just about the era that we, in which we live, really, is that I would actually argue I'm an empirical enthusiast. Uh, I am uh, optimistic almost to a fault. But it is based on empiricism. So um, every, as I'm a geneticist, so I uh, you know, really am fascinated by what has happened from when we started out as a single cell and became an adult. Everyone in this room started out as a single cell and all the instructions for the molecular synthesis of all the cells and the lineage specification of everything in your body was present in that very first cell. If anyone in this room did not start out as a single celled embryo, please come see me afterward. I would like to do some experiments on you. <laughs> Uh, and also there's a number of cocktail places we should probably go to. So, um, but everyone, I'm fascinated by that. I have been since I was a child. That's why I love being a geneticist, but I'm empirical enthusiast uh, and optimist because every single day that I wake up is literally the best day of my career in my life. Not because I get the most done, because uh, sometimes I just kind of wallow staring at my computer. I have a drool cup by my keyboard. Sometimes I just stare at Twitter and I'm not sure what's happening. So those are some bad days. But the amount of data and knowledge and sequence information in particular that's present today is greater than any other day ever. And that is true every single day that I wake up and you wake up and anyone's alive. And so the capacity for discovery and actually understanding biology and genetics and everything we know about really life is greater today than any other day. And that is always true every day you wake up. And so it actually means that the empirical enthusiasm, it's not an opinion that this is the best day ever. It's an actual fact. And right. So I sometimes run to lab. I'll get out of the subway and I'm walking and I'm like, oh, I, I, I got to get to lab. But it takes several blocks and I get really impatient with how long it takes to get to lab. So I'll just start running there uh, because I'm excited to get there. So I, I think um, I'm because I'm, it's, it's a fact. It's actually the best day to be in lab ever. So that's the second story. The third story, slightly longer and the last one. Everyone here started as was one cell embryo, except for that girl I met at the break. She's not here now, but she was really weird. Uh, um, <laughs> she's not here. She was really extraordinary, but uh, we're meeting up later. The, <laughs> except sometimes embryos split. So sometimes you can have twins. This happened, for example, with Mark and Scott Kelly, uh, who I have their cells and their DNA in my freezer. We just finished a very large five-year study on what happens to the body when you go to space for a full year. And I'm excited to say uh, that actually now Mark Kelly's running for Senate, actually, so he just announced that. So I now have at least one potential senator's cells and genome in my freezer and in my lab. So if we get 99 more, we could have like the senatorial genomics project. Uh, and I keep getting asked, will I sequence Trump? I don't know what would happen to the sequencing machines if we tried that. Something really strange would happen. So I don't, we haven't done that yet. But we've learned, and I'm very passionate about this, is that I, I love humans. I'm a humanist. I'm an optimist. And I actually want to see humans uh, persist as long as possible. So what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life, in my opinion, is just to have the capacity to ask that question. And, and when you have the ability to ask the question, what is the meaning of life, it means you can have this awareness that we all have that we don't live forever, that not only individually, but as a species. And even just the awareness of extinction, the capacity for the awareness of extinction, is the first step towards avoiding extinction. And as far as we know, we're the only species anywhere in the universe that has this ability. So if you ask me what the meaning of life is, it's the ability to keep that ability to ask that question, to have that awareness. And so we've started the study of what happens to the body in space for a year. I think it's just for the one step on the stairwell towards survival. So you go to Mars, go farther. But it still begs the question. Let's say we live under the light of a second sun, and then a fifth sun, and then a thousand sun. We keep expanding, expanding. Let's say it's like we're in an Asimov novel, and we've been around for billions of years. Eventually, 
actually it begs the question, well, what will happen if the universe expands forever and you have the entropy death of the universe and it gets too cold, or if it collapses back in on itself, what will we do? Well, the biggest ethical question, the meaning of life is, should we prevent and restructure the collapse of the universe, the eventual expansion, because life, as we heard before, is one of the few things that counteracts entropy. Should we do that? Would we do that? And I think, you know, genetically engineering humans to survive in space or engineering the entire structure of the universe, I think we would probably have to just and the fear that in another universe it might not happen again. So the meaning of life is to keep asking the question, to be aware of extinction, avoid it, and be stewards for our life and every other life that we come across. Wow. 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 In a nutshell. <laughs>